Today I installed the July 2020 update for the Honda Goldwing navigation software. Now this is for the 2018 to 2020 Honda Goldwing models. And what's exciting about this update is it does include support for Android Auto. Now you're going to need a USB 2.0 or higher flash drive with at least 16 gigabyte capacity. You'll need a computer with a high-speed internet connection, and you can expect the update to take at least one hour. Now, you need to follow all the instructions on the Honda website for how to download and copy the update file to the USB thumb drive. I'll put a link in the description of this video of where you can get that information. I'm going to start by showing you my USB thumb drive already plugged in to the Honda Goldwing underneath the glove box, as shown here. Now it does take quite a bit of time when you turn the Goldwing on for it to recognize the thumb drive and begin the update process. I'm going to show you how long it takes. I'm not going to cut this video down. I want you to know it takes at least 30, maybe 40 seconds for it to recognize the update. I know some people expect the update to begin immediately, but it actually does take quite a while for the bike to recognize the update USB thumb drive uh, that's connected. So you just have to be patient. Uh, I timed it and I think on my bike it was about 35 to 40 seconds before it actually brought up the option to install the update. After a while, you should see a screen like this. And the default answer is no, but you want to make sure you use your jog dial to select yes and then hit the, hit the enter button and it will begin the update process. Now it may not look immediately like it's updating, but the screen will eventually go black and then you'll see this message and just let it run. Now if you need to walk away from the bike, you should always place your key to the bike, the smart key on the seat. Don't take the smart key away from the bike or it could stop the update process. I've done that before, so uh, it's kind of embarrassing. So leave the key on the seat and just let this run. It could take 30 to 45 minutes uh, depending on your bike. Uh, everybody seems to get a different experience. When the update is done, the bike's electrical system will reboot itself as it's doing here and eventually you will see uh, the generic startup screen. Now we need to remove the USB thumb drive from the motorcycle and I'm going to instead in its place I'm going to place a USB cable and it's a USB to USB-C, uh, male to male, and that's because I'm going to plug in my Android phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy 10 or S10. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the one end of the cable into the motorcycle, and then I'll plug the other end into my Android phone. So now I'm plugging in my Android phone using the USB-C end of the cable, and what I'm trying to do is get Android Auto to work. Uh, but you have to understand, I've never done this before, and there's very little information. I'm going to go ahead and say to allow access to phone data, because that message came up on my phone. I assume that has something to do with the motorcycle being connected to the phone. Okay, after plugging in my phone, I turned the bike off, and now I'm going to turn it back on and see if it finds Android Auto. I do have my headset connected and turned on. Here we go to the home menu. Now eventually I did see a message uh, asking me if I did want to connect or enable Android Auto and you can do it either once or have it always enable. I decided to go ahead and select always enable. That way if I have the phone plugged into the bike it will always bring up Android Auto. So once I did that then I began waiting on the phone and I could see the message about welcome to Android Auto. 
Now, I started out selecting the Get Started button because you have to give the motorcycle permission to access your phone. And that's basically what this is doing. And I just started clicking Continue. But here I made a mistake. I On the safety information, I clicked No Thanks because I thought it was just telling me I didn't need to watch the safety information. And I should have clicked Continue. And it basically took me out of the setup altogether. When I went back in and tried to reset up Android Auto, I got this error message saying that it had been stopped. I needed to unplug the phone and plug it back in. But no matter what I did, I kept getting that error message. I'm showing you this screw up on my part because I want you to know how to fix it. What I did is I simply unplugged the phone from the motorcycle and rebooted the phone turned the phone off, turned it back on, just did a restart, and then it finally worked. So with my phone rebooted, I decided to just start all over, turn the bike off and back on one more time, all because I hit no thanks on that message. So just make sure you don't do that and it should go much smoother for you. Now the Android setup or Android auto setup message will come up automatically. Once the phone detects that you're connected to an Android auto device, this screen will come up. So now I'm going to click get started and I'm just going to continue to click more. And I'm going to watch all these stupid messages. Don't hit no thanks. Keep going more and more and it will just take you through a series of setup screens like it's doing here on mine. And now you come to the permission screen where you're basically giving your motorcycle permission to access your contacts, uh, messages, phone, and then you just continue the setup. Just keep clicking continue. Now, when I got to this screen, I went ahead and clicked Android Auto for notification access. That way, I'm giving it permission to send any notifications on my phone to the dash of my Goldwing. Now, here's where I got a little confused. Once that all was set up, you can see Google Maps now comes up on my screen and I can see the Android Auto icon on my dash now. What I found confusing is that when I clicked on the Android Auto icon and hit enter, it just went into Google Maps. It didn't give me a submenu of the Android Auto apps that I had access to. And it took me a while to figure out what I needed to do. And I don't know why it works this way. But you'll notice a small icon on the bottom left of the Google Maps screen. And when you click on that, it's kind of like a stop button. And it will take you back to Android Auto. So you use your jog dial to navigate down to that little return home button. And when you click on it, now you see the Android Auto uh, app list. Now on my Android Auto screen, you can see what I have available. I have Google Maps, Spotify, Google Play Music, my phone app. Of course, I can exit back to the main Honda screen. That's the Honda icon. I have a Samsung Music app. I can go into Settings. And I also have access to Waze. Now you can reorganize these icons from your telephone if you give your phone uh, the access to do that. You do that through the settings menu. Now when you click over to the settings icon on the Goldwing, it's going to give you a lot of other options about showing message notifications, showing media notifications, not sure what that is, uh, no sound from notifications, and you get all these different options showing the weather, and then there's more settings, which uh, I went into and I wanted, I did want to show the weather. Now, if you go to access on phone screen, now you can go to your Android phone to control the settings from the phone. And in fact, once I chose that on the Goldwing, it automatically brought up the screen on the phone where I could change some of these settings, such as Google Assistant. There's actually more settings on the phone than there were on the Goldwing. So you can select a lot of different things here. So you'll just need to go through your phone. It may be a little bit different for your phone. You can select which apps you want to have show up on the Goldwing. Uh, and I can 
There's only a few apps on my phone that are showing up. Uh, if you have more apps on your phone and your Goldwing, I'd like to know about it. Put it in the comments down below once you get yours set up. I'd be interested to know what apps you have access to on your Honda Goldwing. So let's go take a look at what's changed in the navigation system with this new update. At first glance, I really don't see much difference. It looks pretty much the same. There are some things you can change. You can change the map view. You can change the colors, the background colors for the uh, daytime maps. Not sure that's a huge change but apparently that is one of the changes they made. The only other changes that Honda mentions is that there's a new ETA function, so when you're riding on a route, it will give you an estimated time of arrival, and they also now show the speed limit signs or the speed limits on the map as you're riding. I haven't tested this yet. I'm just going through the different setup modes and trying to see what's changed there. And really nothing else has changed. It looks the same, but we should get speed limit signs and I will show you that on a future motor vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.